Grace Luanga channel for free meteorology and navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson 10 of Airplane Navigation Instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga. For those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and uh, my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson nine, we looked at turning and acceleration errors, a subtopic of instruments topic. All right, you guys asked for it, so today on Fitcher Space, we are looking at gyroscopes. First off, gyroscopes should not be confused with reaction wheels, which I talked about in an earlier video, this one right here. Gyroscopes are different. They don't control a spacecraft's orientation the way reaction wheels do. Instead, they give the spacecraft an inertial reference point in space, one that the guidance computer can use to activate reaction controls to change the spacecraft's orientation. If you've ever played with a gyroscope, you know that once you get a gyroscope spinning, you can do all kinds of weird things with it without it tipping over. You can balance it on the end of your finger and it won't wobble. That's because gyroscopes resist motion around their spin axis. A natural navigation system, bracket, INS, bracket. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Inertial Navigation System, bracket, INS, bracket. The topic describes a navigational instrument whose principle is inertia bracket or rigidity bracket and whose operation is independent of external nerve aids as you say yes people have always tried to get from point a to point b over land across seas or more recently by air and even into outer space this type of navigation uses measurements of movement, starting with the Earth's rotation in relation to the sun. An inertial navigation system can calculate the underwater craft's position and course in space's three dimensions using six movement sensors, three accelerometers, and three gyroscopes. Introduction Inertial Navigation System, bracket, INS, bracket, subtopic, is one of the most fascinating subtopics in the instruments topic because it is supplementary to the directional gyro indicator bracket DGI bracket 
theory given in lesson two. A national navigation system, bracket, INS, bracket, subtopic, therefore, is the calculus integral of the directional gyro indicator, bracket, DGI, bracket, differential equation. Of course, if you know the calculus integral of the DGI differential equation, you can also compute inertial outputs, bracket, e.g., latitude, longitude, bracket. Therefore, I believe that this lesson 10 will be beneficial to all of us. Every time the air data inertial reference system is powered up, it needs to be initialized so that it knows where it is, which way is north, and which way the aircraft is pointed. You just give the system the aircraft coordinates and give the ADARU time to align its reference axes with the rotation of the Earth and compute true heading relative to true north. During an alignment, it's important to keep the aircraft completely stationary so that the ADARU can accurately sense the rotation of the Earth. A valid entry of latitude and longitude will be transmitted to all three ADARUs regardless of the setting of the system display switch. But the ADARUs must be set to NAV on the CDU and they must be in align mode to accept position data. After you've entered the aircraft position, you could set the display select switch to heading to monitor the countdown timer, or you could select status to monitor for fault codes. When the alignment completes, the align lights turn off and the ADARUs automatically transition into nav mode. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson 10, the viewer will be able to explain the following inertial navigation system bracket INS bracket technical terms by meteorological examples bracket where possible bracket triangle of velocities Great circle DR truck convergence and departure gyro compassing stabilization linearization initial con conditioning align mode integration nav mode dead reckoning inertial platform inertial navigation system bracket INS bracket 1960s and 1970s alignment accuracy and limitations transport wonder INS inertial outputs pioneers of the inertial navigation system bracket INS bracket science this is an inertial reference unit it provides the outputs for the aircraft's avionics. Firstly, it gives primary pitch and roll latitude. That was also provided by the INS. It gives both true and magnetic heading. We're already familiar with the idea that inertial systems operate in true because they align themselves by detecting earth spin. The INS gave us true heading. The IRS gives angular rates of pitch, roll and yaw, just as the INS did. And it gives inertial velocities north-south, east-west and ground speed, as the INS did. However, it also gives barrow inertial vertical rate. The IRS gives latitude and longitude position information, as the INS did. But it also gives a barrow inertial altitude. It gives wind speed, wind direction and drift, as the INS did. 
From this raw data, it calculates various items of secondary data, which are used in the flight management system and the electronic flight instrumentation system, both of which we will cover later. Definitions We will begin by defining triangle of velocities, great circle DR truck, convergence and departure. Integration Details of the definitions First of all, it is very important to remember that Lesson 10 deals with the 1960s and 70s generation of the Inertial Navigation System bracket INS bracket the terminology and definitions, therefore, may slightly differ from those in current product manuals. Triangle of Velocities In air navigation, the triangle of velocities is used to determine the third side after substituting the other two sides. The quantities include the mean wind, the aircraft heading and true airspeed, the aircraft ground speed and track, initial position bracket or departure bracket, and the wind drift. All of the navigation calculations carried out on the wind face of your navigation computer are based on the triangle of velocities. Therefore, we begin our training on the use of the wind face by introducing you to the principle of the triangle of velocities. The first side of the triangle of velocities is called the air vector. The second side is called the wind vector. The line joining these two vectors is the resultant vector, the ground vector. The angle between the air vector, the direction in which our aircraft is heading, and the ground vector, the track the aircraft follows over the ground, is known as the drift angle. The wind face of the navigation computer enables us to solve triangle of velocities problems for navigational flight. The main components of this side of the computer are the rotating scale and window, the fixed drift scale, the index mark on the drift scale, the slide. The slide is two sided. One side gives a low speed range which goes up to 230 knots and the other a high speed range between 150 to 650 knots. Great circle bracket DR bracket truck. A great circle truck is the shortest distance between any two points on the navigation chart. It is represented on the chart as a curve between two meridians bending poleward. During flight, the DGI 
bracket or INS bracket follows the grid circle track. All meridians converge to a point at either pole. Depending on the proximity of a track to the pole and the relative angle, track direction can change quite rapidly. Sometimes it is useful for ease of navigation to follow a track that does not change direction. A line that does have constant direction is called a rum line and this line will cut each meridian at the same angle. A rum line therefore has the advantage of a constant track. From the diagram on the screen we can see that a typical great circle track follows a different path over the Earth's surface to the rum line track between the same departure and destination positions. The rum line is always nearer to the equator than its corresponding great circle path. The shape of the rum line can be described as convex to the equator. Conversely, it can be described as concave to the nearer pole. Convergence and departure. Convergence is the Earth's latitudinal focusing of longitudes to the poles. Convergence equals a half times the lambda sine phi. Departure is the distance traveled bracket nautical miles bracket by the airplane on a great circle track. Departure equals 60 times the lambda cos phi. See lesson 1 for more. Okay, departure. In its most basic form, departure is just measuring the east to west distance between two points along the same line of latitude. In other words, if all we're doing is measuring the east to west or west to east difference, then really all we need to do is measure the change in our longitude between those positions and then convert it from degrees into nautical miles. At the equator, every degree represents 60 nautical miles. So here's a few key points to remember. Firstly, we assume using a geocentric model that the Earth is a perfect sphere. It actually isn't, but for the sake of exam questions, it is. Um, secondly, at the equator, one degree is equivalent to 60 nautical miles. And thirdly, the departure formula is the change in longitude multiplied by 60 multiplied by the cosine of mean latitude. And I'm saying mean latitude here, chances are it'll be the same latitude, but the departure formula as I remember it is um, change in longitude times 60 times the cos of your mean lat. And that is it. So I hope that's all right. I hope that's not too, um, too phasing. GNAV gets a little bit more tricky than this. Uh, if you found this video helpful, then I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already and spread the love. If, if you're finding this helpful, I would really appreciate it if you tell other ATPL students um, about it as well. Also, give me some ideas of what might be a useful topic to cover for you in the future and I'll uh, do my best to do it. Anyway, for now, my name's Tom and I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips. Integration. Integration is the calculus method of converting acceleration to speed and speed to distance. It is not enough to simply measure accelerations. They have to be converted, firstly, into velocities and then, secondly, into distance gone in order to find the new present position.
Each of these processes is called integration. You will have already come across it if you have studied integral calculus previously. For I and S, as we said, we have to integrate twice. First, to convert the accelerations into velocities. Secondly, to convert the velocities into distances. As pilots, we're not required to understand calculus. We simply need to know that there are electronic devices that can carry out these processes for us. They're called integrators and they are used in INS. This is a diagram of a Miller integrator, which was used in the 70s and is from the period of the equipment that we are looking at. Dead reckoning. Bracket DR. Bracket. Dead reckoning. DR is the calculation of a new position by using the information found at the previous position. In meteorology, dead reckoning DR is analogous to numerical weather prediction bracket AWP bracket. INS is a complex and expensive full navigational aid. It is extremely accurate. It is independent of outside communications and ground stations. Consequently, it can operate worldwide. INS uses a sophisticated form of dead reckoning. It starts from a known position. It then measures and processes the accelerations of the aircraft. These accelerations give accurate data on speed and change of direction to determine a new position. INS measures or calculates the following navigational information. Present position, that is, latitude and longitude. Heading, which way the aircraft is pointing. Track the direction of the aircraft's path over the ground. The difference between heading and track is called drift. It is caused by crosswind. Ground speed, that is, the speed over the ground, which is usually not the same as the speed through the air. Again, this is the effect of wind. Inertial platform. Inertial platform is the self-referencing gyro-stabilized platform on which the accelerometers are mounted. The accelerometer is mounted on a platform which is stabilized and north orientated by gyroscopes. Firstly, the platform may not be perfectly level. Platform tilt can also be known as initial leveling misalignment. The leveling process during alignment is very accurate. Ideally, it should be within about 6 seconds of arc. This is 1 600th of a degree. Nevertheless, it is a compromise with the requirement for a reasonably short alignment time. On completion of the alignment, the platform may not be perfectly level. The next error to consider is leveling gyrotopple. We said that the platform and gyro might not be initially perfectly level. However, the gyro may also topple from its start position. With the accuracy to be expected of IN quality gyros, the topple rate would be of the order of only one hundredth of a degree per hour. But nevertheless, it is finite and would have an effect on the output. Inertial Navigation System Bracket INS Bracket Waypoints Inertial Navigation System INS is a self-contained navigation system using a gyro-stabilized platform for data reckoning and with a pilot interface allowing a limited number of waypoints to be entered and basic navigation information 
to be displayed. The INS also gives waypoint steering. This is the facility to enter a route as a series of latitudes and longitudes and then have a steering signal generated to be displayed on the flight director system and fed to the autopilot. With waypoint steering, the INS will display the desired track between any two waypoints. It also calculates distance to go to the next waypoint. And time to go. There are three basic units in the INS. Two of them are on the flight deck and are operated by the pilot. The third can be remotely located in the aircraft and does not have to be accessed in flight. The two components located on the flight deck are the mode selector unit, often abbreviated to MSU, and the control and display unit, often called the CDU. The third unit contains inertial sensors and reference devices. As we shall shortly see, these sensors are accelerometers and gyros. This box is called the inertial navigation unit which is often shortened to INU. Alignment Alignment is the initial setting of the INS in which the reference axis must match the geographic reference. During navigation, the INS uses heading true, not heading magnetic. Alignment takes place in three stages, caging, leveling and gyro compassing. Caging the gimbals protects the gyros whilst they are being spun up. The gyros are also warmed up. It takes about three minutes. The system then automatically proceeds to the leveling phase. The accelerometers are used as gravity detectors and the platform is erected to the local horizontal. This also takes about three minutes. Gyro compassing is the process of rotating the platform so that it takes up an orientation of true north. Gyro compassing senses the heading with reference to the Earth's spin axis, which is true east. It takes about 11 minutes at medium latitudes. So, with approximately 3 minutes for caging, 3 minutes for levelling and 11 minutes for gyro compassing, the entire alignment process normally takes about 17 minutes, though it does vary with latitude. It is essential that the correct initial latitude is entered. However, an incorrect initial longitude does not degrade alignment. Alignment is limited to latitudes of less than 70 degrees or so. If this is achieved, the aircraft can be subsequently operated at high latitudes, but it cannot be initially aligned at high latitudes. The aircraft cannot be moved at all during the alignment process. Even the vibration from a running engine or gusty wind may prevent alignment. Accuracy and limitations of the INS Accuracy and uh, limitations of bracket 1970s and early 1980s bracket INS may have position errors of two nautical miles bracket NM bracket per hour. Today's inertial navigation is not perfect, it has certain errors that reduce the accuracy over time. This reduction in the accuracy of the system is known as drift, and it consists of measurement errors that accumulate over time, making position estimations less accurate. Now, if the system has for example a drift rate of 1 mile per hour, this means that after one hour of flight, the estimated position calculated by the inertial system will be within one mile of the actual position of the aircraft. We can summarize the disadvantages of the INS. First of all, it has a heavy and complex design, since it uses mechanical sensors. There is lower precision in calculations and estimates. 
the drift rate is high. It has longer warm-up and alignment times, since the platform needs to be aligned with the horizon and true north. It requires a manual entry of the initial position for the alignment. And finally, it has a more complex control panel. Now, it may seem that the system has many disadvantages, however, by the time the INS was developed, it represented a major advance in navigation systems, especially for long-range flights. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Transport Wonder Transport Wonder Bracket and also apparent drift bracket is the error due to the aircraft flight. It is usually corrected by signals derived from the INS latitude and longitude outputs. See lesson 9. For more. The broad subdivisions of Gyro Wonder are into real and apparent. It can therefore be said that, with INS technology, real Wonder is so low that the gyros can almost be regarded as ideal gyros. This leaves us with apparent Wonder. You will remember that this is split into Earth Rate and Transport Wonder. They are both needed to stabilize the platform. The way the earth rate varies with latitude will depend on whether it is the horizontal component or the vertical component of earth rate which is being considered. We'll start by considering the horizontal component. This gives us an equation for the horizontal component of earth rate which we have met before. It's 15 times the sine value of the latitude in degrees per hour. The cosine of zero, or the latitude of the equator, is one. The cosine of 90 degrees, or the latitude of the pole, is zero. This gives us an equation for the vertical component of Earth rate. It's 15 times the cosine of the latitude in degrees per hour. Corrections for Earth rate, based on the sine and cosine of the latitude, therefore need to be computed and passed back to the platform in order to keep it level as the Earth rotates. Fortunately, latitude is being constantly updated in the North Channel. All we have to do is constantly feed the latitude to a computer, which continuously calculates 15 degrees times sine latitude and 15 degrees times cosine latitude per hour, and pass it to the appropriate channel of the platform. Inertial Outputs Typical inertial outputs of the Inertial Navigation System INS include but are not limited to true heading, true airspeed bracket task bracket and ground speed bracket GS bracket latitude and longitude, wind speed and direction, and drift angle, pitch, roll, and yo. The inertial navigation system, which is usually abbreviated to INS, or sometimes IN, began to be fitted to airliners in the late 1960s and early 70s. In order to illustrate the principles of operation, we are going to look at 1970s style technology of INS. INS measures or calculates the following navigational information. Present position, that is, latitude and longitude. Heading, which way the aircraft is pointing. Track, the direction of the aircraft's path over the ground. The difference between heading and track is called drift. It is caused by crosswind. Ground speed, that is, the speed over the ground, which is usually not the same as the speed through the air. Again, this is the effect of wind. INS heading is about 10 times more accurate than previous systems, which were gyromagnetic compasses. 
Additionally, INS heading is not dependent on earth magnetism. INS calculates an initial true heading by detecting the earth's spin. Pioneers of the Inertial Navigation System bracket INS bracket science Charles Stock Gripper Charles Stock Gripper was born in 1901 in Windsor, Missouri. He spent two years at the University of Missouri and then went to Palo Alto, California for a BSc in Psychology from Stanford University. In 1954, Draper's Massachusetts Institute of Technology bracket MIT bracket Instrumentation Laboratory partnered with the Sperry Corporation to create the first inertial navigation system. Draper, the father of inertial navigation. His belief that education needed a hands-on component led him to establish the instrumentation laboratory within MIT's Aero Department. In 1973, MIT divested the laboratory, thus creating Draper, an independent, not-for-profit engineering solutions company. A problem solution. The following ATPL question was set by CAA and it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Gris Luanga. Our products are everywhere and have been there throughout history. We were there when the first autopilot controller used our gyroscope to hold the plane stable during flight. We were there for the creation of the first laser navigation system where our ring laser gyroscope helped make air travel faster and more efficient by providing safer and more accurate navigation. Our first Continuo, when our inertial navigation system, aided by GPS, allowed the first autonomous military aircraft to land on an aircraft carrier without a pilot. And we'll continue to be there for many more firsts and new innovations for years to come. We're passionate and proud of what we do, and we'll keep pushing to find navigation solutions for our customers. Question. Radio error rates of inertial navigation systems are obtained from the formula. Radio error rate bracket not optimized per hour bracket equals distance of ground position from INS position bracket not optimized bracket divided by time in nav mode bracket hours bracket calculate the radio error rate of a system from the following data obtain that engine shut down ramp position 53 degrees 21 means 30 seconds north 0 21 degrees 6 means 24 seconds west INS position 53 degrees 12.5 means north 0 1 degrees 56.4 West Time in nav mode 7 hours 30 minutes Bracket Assume Cos 53 degrees 17 minutes Equals 0 0.60 Bracket Hi, I'm Chris Nikolopoulos with SBD Systems. I'm the field application engineer, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, our list of products that we have. Um, we have 
the Apogee, which is the higher end product that we have with a 0.01 degrees accuracy on roll and pitch. Uh, we also have, since last year, the Equinox 2, which replaces the Equinox 1, uh, which is now uh, goes from 0.05 degrees to 0.03 degrees accuracy in roll and pitch. We also have the Ellipse 2, which replaces the Ellipse 1, which is now 0.1 degree accuracy instead of uh, 0 0.2 uh, for roll and pitch. Time. Viewers, because of time, the general inertial navigation system, bracket, INS, bracket theory, cannot be fully covered here. But it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Grace Luanga. Many thanks to all of you who have shared your video and sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Try to solve that ATPL question and I will correct your answer. Meanwhile, those who can't find the book you can send me an email or SMS and I shall send you the link. I am always available 24-7. Please subscribe and benefit more from our channel. As I look forward to meeting you, I beg to stop here. Thank you very much for watching me and God bless you. Laser Ref 4 solves the obsolescence factor and equips your aircraft for the future. Suitable for a wide range of business aviation aircraft, Laser Ref 4 reduces installation and operating costs, as well as pilot and crew workload. Plus, it offers a 30% improvement in reliability compared to its previous versions. Other important benefits are the automatic realign function for post-flight alignment, considerably less power use than previous versions. Contact Honeywell to discover all the advantages of upgrading to Laser Ref 4.